I forgot to put DT on the camera like an idiot. Let me do that really quick. There he is. Hi, guys. Hello, and welcome to the Hot Crick Hi, Cantina. I'm, I'm, I'm here too, guys. What's up? He is here. He's here. I just forgot to flip the button. Uh, welcome to episode 165 of the Clock Creek Cantina. I am one of your hosts, Josh902, and this is the other host who is here. I just forgot to hit the button. I am here. Uh, I'm DT3, and I'm here. And uh, yeah, what's up, guys? How's it going? Happy uh, new week. Happy good Monday to all of you guys out there. Today, this is our 165th episode. An episode of first DTs. It is episode of first. Be a first in our 160 plus episodes that we've done so far. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be heads up. It's gonna be a, a lot shorter than uh, usual episodes. So I mean, if you're watching this already on the on the replay or the uh, you know the VOD or the YouTube upload or or you know you're listening to the MP3 you know on Spotify or whatever. And you already know that because you see the episode length. But if you're watching it live, then yeah, it's gonna it's probably gonna be a shorter one, but that's okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> with the there's just a lot going on that would make it like one, we just had like a big news dump of game stuff, right? Like so that all yeah. that happened. So that's gonna be dry for a, a smidge. Uh, the writer strike is ongoing, right? So that's yeah. Like, there's not going to be probably a whole lot basically, of news while that's happening. Yeah, basically all of the TV and a lot of the movie news as well is just like this thing is delayed because of the writer strike, which is like we already like we already know that, you know what I mean? So it's yeah, like, I don't. You know, every other week it's like this show and this show and this thing and that thing. It's like, well, we obviously it's delayed for the writer's strike like you know what i'm saying like come on now yeah so yeah just there's not a whole lot out there right now but it is what it is we're gonna be with you anyway for whatever short amount of time we're here for and yeah. if it's a shorter episode it's a shorter episode it's just the way it is so we'll spend some time with you guys a little bit today so let's go ahead and start it off dt with what we've been up to this past week i'm gonna let you go first because mine is a lot so you can go right ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh -oh. For me, over the past week, I have been watching uh, the usual movies and, and trying to watch a couple shows and play the games I usually play. So Fortnite, obviously. Uh, played it from Rogue Company also. I've been playing that a lot lately too because... I got the battle pass for that, and I'm just trying to, you know, level it up and, and do all that. But so yeah, so both both of those is, is the reason why I just consistently play those games. Um, then apart from that, I played Remnant, uh, from the Ashes, just to kind of replay that game and kind of re, you know, get myself acquainted with that. Um, in preparation for Remnant Two for whenever that comes out. That'll be uh you know fun to get to, and then I on stream I played Tell Me Why all three chapters Dunzo. We're gonna be starting Spider Marvel Spider Man Miles Morales tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. I've been trying to play that game for a while. I know that it's also not really a super long game because originally it was supposed to be like DLC for the first game, but then they just ended up making it like its own expansion. DLC kind of the or its own expansion thing. So uh we'll see how long it takes for me to get through it. Um I don't imagine it'll be super long. So we'll we'll, we'll probably get through it either I, I wanna say maybe from, I'll start it this week and maybe I'll finish it next week, but we'll see. Uh, that's kind of my estimation, I guess, right now. But that's the next like big game coming up, and then apart from that, after we're done with uh, Miles Morales, I want to do. Uh, I mean, this is this is. I'm, I'm talking about stuff that hasn't happened yet. That that will happen though. So it's not really part of my past week, but I'm just kind of giving you guys a little heads up on what I'm gonna be streaming up next though. So after Miles Morales, I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be returning back to the Assassin's Creed universe, and I'm gonna be uh, continuing with Unity. <clears throat> so. We got that coming up. 
Um, but going back to what I have been up to this week, uh, Diablo 4 as well I played, um, which I'll be streaming again this week as well for the for the week four drops, I believe, the Barbarian ones. So, you know, come come get your drops if you want to you know, want some of that. And then also I do have the, uh, the, the Primal Instinct mount too, so, you know, come, come get that if you want it, but. Yeah, that's that's pretty much been it, uh, um, video game wise for me. Uh, TV show wise, I wa- I finished watching all of uh, Black Mirror season six. Uh, I started what episodes one and two last week, and then this past week I've I, I finished uh, three, four, five. Pretty good season overall. I enjoyed it. Uh, I like just I just like Black Mirror though. It's fun. It's an it's a, it's a neat little uh, interesting show. Uh, what else did I watch TV wise? Uh, Secret Invasion first episode was out, and yeah, pretty uh, pretty pretty crazy first episode, man. Especially that ending, which was kind of like whoa. But uh, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it because I'm sure we will be doing an episode on that. Um, uh, and then. Oh, really quick before I head to the, what I like, what movies I watched this past week. Video game wise, Steam sent me a like play test for this game called Sengoku Dynasty, and I I thought that was pretty pretty cool. It's like a feudal Japan, uh, survival game, and. Yeah, they sent me like a play test for it, like through Steam. Like they sent it to me. Like I got an email being like, "You've been invited to this play test," and I thought it was pretty cool, man. Like I, I enjoyed it. Like you know, we like survival games, you know, you know. So I tried this one out for a little bit, and it's pretty cool. So yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, you can request to uh to try out the play test on the, on their page. So yeah, just uh, you know. Try that out if that sounds interesting to you because I tried it and it was pretty fun. So recommend that one. And then also I played a bunch of demos because for Steam uh, Next Fest. A lot of cool demos out there, man. I played a lot of cool demos. Um, I had like 20 that I wanted to play, but I only ended up playing like half of that, like 10 of them. And and of the ones that I played, the ones that I would recommend to you guys are... um. I forgot. I forgot last week if I mentioned the ones I played, but On Guard was from uh, Summer Game Fest. Strongly recommend that one. Great game. Liza P was fun. The Invincible was good. I Am Future was good. Station to Station was good. Um, and then recently I played uh, Contraband Police, which I think is already out, so that one doesn't really count. But cool game. Echo Point Nova, fun demo. Try that one out if you haven't. Uh, El Paso Elsewhere was pretty fun too. If you're into like a Matrix, uh, Max Payne kind of game, that was pretty cool. Uh, Viewfinder, oh man, Viewfinder. So if you know me, you know that I'm not into puzzle games, but that might be the one puzzle game to get me to play puzzle games because Viewfinder is that game is trippy. And it's fun, and it's just cool, man. Like, I, I don't know how, to, I don't know that game's that game's cool, man. I, I I do I want that game. That game's great. Uh, also play a little bit of Venba. That's another fun fun one that I recommend. But anyway, there's there's a lot of cool demos out there for you guys to try out. Try them out. Steam uh Steam Next Fest is going on right now. I think uh, when does it end? I don't know when it ends. Maybe soon. But go over to Steam and check that out because there's a lot of fun demos to try out. Anyway. Uh, so movies this past week, I've been really getting back into the, uh, the DC AMU, which is a mouthful, but it's the DC animated movie universe is what that stands for. And, uh, I watched Batman versus Robin, which is pretty cool, man. Like, I don't really want to spoil things, but I love these movies and, and, uh, they got some pretty uh that one in particular has some cool stuff that makes me want to play a video game that I haven't played yet. But I really want to play. So it makes me want to play that one even more. 
Um, then I watched uh, Batman Bad Blood, which is like I guess which is the the, the one that was after that one. Um, and that one was pretty cool. They you get some Bat Family stuff in there. You get Batwoman. You get Batwing. Like it's pretty dope. You get more members of the of the uh, Bat Family. Fucking Dick Grayson like acts as Batman at one point because you know some stuff happens and Batman is kind of out of the picture for a little bit. So that's kind of cool. Um, Justice League versus Teen Titans. Also, pretty cool. Um, it's interesting, like. For me, like my Teen Titans are always gonna be the Teen Titans from the animated show from the two thousands. Like, like when I think of Teen Titans, that's that's like what comes to my head automatically. So, like watching this version of Teen Titans from this universe is like so interesting because it's so different from that, you know, team. Um, so I always just I always find that funny. Um, seeing that, but it was cool. I liked that movie as well. Justice League Dark, I had already seen it, but I just rewatched it just to kind of you know get a you know refresher on it and that movie's cool man swamp thing etrigan you know john constantine like zatanna i love me some zatanna like it was it's a good it's a good mix of characters and then obviously you gotta throw in batman in there because people love batman and i mean i love batman too but you know i th- i think i don't think it needs to be in everything but they throw him in everything anyway <laughs> um but still fun movie good movie and then the one, and then the one after that was uh, Teen Titans: Judas Contract. They need to rename this movie Teen Titans: The Horny Contract because them motherfuckers <laughs> is horny as shit in that movie, dude. <laughs> like that is one of the horniest like DC Teen Titans things like ever, bro. Like, and then they do like a, they literally have like a extended scene in the movie where it's just like Dance Dance Revolution, like. It's crazy. That movie's that movie's something else, bro. But I I continue to enjoy the DC AMU movies. They're 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 great. Uh have a lot of fun with them. And then the last movie that I watched was not a DC AMU movie. Uh I actually watched this one earlier in the week, but it is uh, Centurion, which is a 2010 movie. You know, Romans obviously and all that. Uh, it's got Michael Fassbender, Dominic West, Olga Kurylenko, uh, David Morrissey. Uh, pretty, pretty solid cast, and it was all right. I liked it for what it was. Um, so yeah, not bad. If you're into like Roman, you know, centurions, kind of, kind of deal. You know, check it out. Let me know what you think. Came out in 2010. Um, but that's pretty much been my week so take it away josh all right um tuesday i streamed some dice making and it was raining that day and uh it just rained it was just really raining heavy and uh i finished up the stream because i there was a break in the rain and i was like you know, or or it stopped. It was raining, and then it stopped raining, and I finished up the stream, and I was like, you know, I need to go back up to the main house because the workshop's from a separate, uh, in a separate building outside from the house, and I was like, I need to go back, and put the laptop up. But it started raining again, so I I sat there and waited for the rain to end. To end. Literally, no thunder, really, no lightning, that entire time that I was was doing dice making. Right, DC's already heard the story. And uh, probably a lot of you have too, but uh, if you hang out with us in Discord, you've heard it. Uh, and I was sitting there and I was typing on Discord because I have internet in the workshop and I was bored uh, waiting for the rain to stop. And just the loudest lightning strike I may have ever heard. Like, I I jumped out of the seat. Like, I wish... I almost wish I had been streaming when it happened, just to see if it would have caught it, you know, like caught that lightning strike to see how loud it was. Um, but loudest lightning strike I've ever heard, and the internet died immediately. And I heard a pop, right? And uh, I'm just going to shorten this up to the short version. Lightning hit, um, I guess, the pole out here and ran lightning down through the modem and basically fry the tv and the internet modem and 
like two a switch box and and uh, direct TV receivers. Uh, so basically, uh, the house got hit by lightning and destroyed a bunch of electronics. The good news is the PC was fine. Like every PC we that's, have is fine. News, yeah, that's the best news right there. The PCs being fine. I was just like, oh, thank God. Once once I once I found out all the PCs were good, I'm like, you know what? Very lucky. One that nobody got hurt. Obviously, tiles didn't burn down or anything like that. Um, and the only thing really lost was like a TV and everything else and, and like a switch box that we'd have to buy ourselves. And then everything else just gets replaced by like the companies, right? Um, but I didn't have internet for a day. Uh, well, they sent they they were good enough to overnight me a new gateway, which would give me internet again. So it showed up the next day. Um, but in the meantime, I uh, didn't have anything to do, right? Like I I had power, but I didn't have any internet. It's amazing what you cannot do when you do not have internet, right? Like it it is it, such a integral. It it is uh, you Loki surge protectors were in, buddy. It didn't. It didn't go through that. It went through the cable that the internet uh, comes in through. That's a different system altogether. Um, it's a. Uh, uh, but it's amazing what you can and cannot do without um. Internet, right? So, I. Uh, I played my Switch. I was playing Hades. I played Hades most of the day. I was like, you know what? I have a Switch. I could play something on the PC like offline, but I was like, you know, I don't really want to. Um, I I just left the PC off for most of that day, and so I ended up playing Hades on the Switch for a little while. Um, and then I kind of got bored of Hades because it had been so long since I played, and I was just getting my ass kicked. Um, I love Hades, don't get me wrong, but when you haven't played it in a while, you kind of get your ass kicked. <laughs> um, uh, and I had other Switch games, but you know. I started a book last year. I think uh, I've talked about it on the podcast before called Mox about with John Moxley wrote the book, the wrestler. Um, and I got halfway through the book and I just stopped reading, I think, because I just got busy. It wasn't that I didn't like the book. And so I finished the book. That's one thing I, I did. Um, I finished reading the book Mox, which I recommend to anybody that even has like a passing interest in wrestling or anything like that. Check out Mox by John Moxley. It's just full of Stories about his uh, early career, um, how he met his wife, uh, their wedding, how they got married. Um, had some good stories, had some sad stories in it. I cried at one point reading this book. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good book. Recommend I'm checking that out to anybody that wants to see it. Um, uh, I also ended up, funny enough, I was so stressed uh, with everything going on. Because even though I was grateful that nobody got hurt with the lightning strike and, and most of the stuff is fixed, fixable, I was still like very stressed trying to get everybody just situated because it, it didn't affect just my household. It affected like all the households around us. So like, which is like my grandparents and all of them and like their house. So I um, was just trying to fix everything. So I just ended up getting super stressed about a bunch of different stuff. And I ended up getting sick over the weekend with just really bad stomach problems like we're not gonna go too deep into that because if you had really bad <laughs> stomach problems you know you know it's not a good time just be aware yeah. of that um what kind of superpowers do you gain during that lightning strike man dude if i gain if i became the flash you know first i'd be a better flash than ezra miller i guess and um uh i don't know i'd save people i guess if i got superpowers um so anyway i ended up getting sick over the weekend and we didn't play blasters and bandits for that which that'll be back this saturday uh playing again so make sure to follow the heroes of fable channel um but i got internet back and i i got to stream a little bit the next day uh of final fantasy 16 which you guys all knew i was super excited for uh and we played a little bit of that on stream um that those vods are up on the youtube go check those out um, I liked the game a lot, but I ended up getting sick, so I didn't get to continue on with that um, like I wanted to. Um, played a Smidge D4 that I was really bad at. Um, uh, um, and then I played some Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, freaking Loki in the chat. 
uh, hooked me up with a, I think it's a playtest beta code, I think, or something like that. They're having like a playtest for the, for the Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. I played a little bit of it. It's really interesting. I, I really adore it. Um, it's a beta key. Gotcha. Um, and, uh, I really enjoy, first of all, I really like Alcat games. They did all the Pathfinder games, uh, that I've played and I really enjoy those. And when I found out they were going to do a Warhammer 40k game, I got really excited for that because I like Warhammer 40k. I think it's a really cool, interesting universe, right? So uh, hopping in that's pretty cool. I'm going to hop back into it some more later when I have some more time. Um, maybe if it's still going. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of it, like, I haven't played as much as I probably like. When I get sick, all I kind of want to do is just lay there and sleep and not really do anything. So I haven't really done all that much with like I haven't like I was so stressed after the the um internet thing, the whole lightning bolt fucking thing. Like I was excited for 16, but I wasn't excited as I was before all that happened just because I was super fucking stressed out, you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know how to explain it. Like it was like all the joy was gone <laughs> uh, from all the stress. It just sucked up everything. So um, that's kind of like why I was a little bit not getting things done as much um, with the gaming and streaming and, and being sick and just the whole fucking mess. Um, uh, Secret Invasion, I watched the first episode of. I like it. That ending is interesting and I am curious to where that series will end up going. Um, and then I watched uh, all of the bear season two because I couldn't wait. And I just, I was really stressed one night and could not sleep. So I just, I put the bear on, uh, the, the new season was out and I thought I'll check this out. And, uh, I don't want to say a lot cause I know DT is going to watch it and I have friends that are watching yeah. it and I don't want to spoil any of it, obviously, but, um, I think that show's going to win awards again. Um, I'll say that much. And uh, okay. that's kind of all I've been up to. Like, it's uh, been very stressful and, and very stomach issues, and which, to be honest, probably influence each other. Like, the stress probably led to stomach issues, and then stomach issues probably led to stress. Um, so... Yeah, it's been a great, it's been a great last week, guys. It was awesome. Shit. <laughs> Two thumbs up. We'll do it again. Not, nah. um, but yeah, it it it's 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 okay. It's getting better. Like everything has been replaced at this point, and um, the only thing is the repair guy is supposed to come out at some point for those direct TV things. But other than that, we're pretty good here at home. Like everybody is happy. Like like we were pretty relieved that the, the the worst of it was just like we lost a tv that's not a big deal that's like what a couple hundred bucks not a big deal tvs are cheap nowadays yeah, um so very easy to replace and nobody got hurt and that's the main thing so yeah um but if you know me at all you know i get stressed about the littlest things dt knows this uh he knows I send him like 500 apologies whenever I fuck something up, even though he's like, man, don't worry about that. I'm like, I fucking, I send 500 apologies anyway. <laughs> like, I can't help it. It's just how I am. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but yeah, that's what we've been up to. We can go ahead and move into uh, gaming no news, DT, which is where we're going to have the most news, I believe, this week. Huh? Yeah, it's going to be the most news because literally, I mean, literally we have none in TV and uh, so we're going to skip TV news this week and then movie news we got like one thing so again it's gonna be a really short episode really short uh you know news portion of the week but let's get into it man let's do it the first thing that i have here is that ea sports and ea games are splitting apart in an internal shakeup so this article here is from uh ign and uh they say that uh, ea is undergoing a major internal reorganization with ea games being renamed ea entertainment uh 
in a message from CEO Andrew Wilson, uh, they said that they're relining its major studios and its leadership structure in an effort to empower our creative teams. The reorganization includes splitting EA Games and EA Sports, with the former being renamed EA Entertainment. And they signal that EA intends to expand beyond games where possible. We're building the future of interactive entertainment on a foundation of legendary franchises and uh, innovative new experiences, which represents massive opportunities for growth, Wilson wrote in a message announcing the news. We're building the future of interactive entertainment on the foundation of legendary fr uh, franchises and innovative new experiences. Uh, Laura, Laura Mieli, or Miel, uh, previously EA's COO, will take over as president or EA president of entertainment, technology, and central development at EA, EA Entertainment. Will she work, will she will, where she will work closely with Vince Zampella and other well-known executives. Cam Weber, who rose out of EA's football games, will continue to lead EA Sports. Both will enjoy uh, expanded control over their respective labels intended to give them more oversight over budgets and decision-making flexibility. Wilson will continue to preside over both organizations as EA CEO. The moves coincide with news that uh, Chief Experiences Officer Chris Bruzo is retiring. With EA Chief Financial Officer Chris uh, also departing the company, David Tinson and Stuart Canfield respectively will take over their responsibilities. Uh, this move, the moves are the latest and has been a major reorganization for EA. Earlier this month, we reported that uh, Star Wars The Republic is on course to move to a third-party developer, with many of its uh, devs being given the opportunity to move elsewhere in the company. It's unclear whether the current organization will result in layoffs. Uh, as before, EA will continue to look after the F1 series, which just really releases, as well as PGA Tour and the newly acquired Super Mega Baseball. This is on top of traditional blockbusters, including Madden, EA Sports FC, NHL, and the upcoming college football reboot. EA Entertainment, meanwhile, will encompass Respawn, Dice, Ripple Effect, Ridgeline Games, Full Circle, Motive Studio, and EA's Seattle Studio. Bioware and the EA Originals label. So that's all under EA Entertainment. Uh, EA also includes numerous mobile games, including Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and the recently released Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle-Earth. Uh, much of the current structure will remain intact, with Zempilla continuing to lead Respawn and ba Battlefield. Samantha Ryan will likewise continue to be in charge of Bioware, Max's Full Circle, Motive Studios. Apart from giving studios uh, leaders more control over their respective domains, the big change appears to be centered on separating out EA Sports, which continues to be EA's biggest profit driver. Uh, EA Soccer's Sims in particular continue to be major money machines for EA, with, with FIFA 23 pushing uh, the publisher near $2 billion in net bookings. Over the coming months, Stuart, Laura, Cam, and David will parlor closely with the studio leaders to organize these organizational changes. Further embedding dedicated capabilities into the franchise teams and driving operation rigor, Wilson wrote, claiming that EA's business remains strong. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, oh, also speaking about Jedi Survivor, which is an EA game, they said that it quickly became a top selling game amid solid reviews. Um, and their next upcoming game is uh, that Immortals of Avium, the new Magic FPS game which was delayed not long ago, like very recently, right? Um, which is supposed to come out on August 22nd. So lots of EA news here with this. Um, they're mainly, the main thing is that they're splitting up EA games and EA sports, and they're redoing EA games into now EA Entertainment, which, you know, they're planning on, I would imagine, doing TV shows and, you know, movies and other stuff now too. So, what do you what do you think of that, Josh? They're, they're gonna you think they're gonna they're gonna charge you to for for DLC for movies and TV shows? Oh God, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Obviously, but 
just going along. You, with you'd say just like. kidding, but it'll happen. It'll probably, like if they could find a way, right? If they could find a way to monetize that, you better believe they would. Um, just kidding, just joking. <laughs> Be careful uh, with our powers, DT. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't. I uh, cool, I guess. Like, I don't have a lot of uh, thoughts on it. Like, they want to make things into other things. Like, like I don't know. Like a a, a Titanfall show would be kind of cool, you know. Like, or, or a yeah. movie, or you know, who doesn't like a giant mech uh, show or movie? Like, um, that'd be kind of cool. Um, I don't know. Like. My brain's like, there's two ways this could go. It could be success or it could suck ass, right? And like, uh, like, <laughs> because, like, what, what do you want to stick to? Do you want to diversify your portfolio more by adding other things like more movies and television shows, or do you want to focus on what you're good at, which is video games, right? So like, what if they become so focused on this entertainment, right, versus you know, video games, right? And they become more focused on TV and in movies and end up just syncing everything like I, i'm not a fan of that like uh like the thought of that because like you know what you're good at which is the games right like even though we give yeah. ea tons of shit like they're kind of doing well right now like jedi survivor is is good and um in that so i mean but the opposite is also like they could Hit it out of the park, you know, the shakeup could be something that they need to really make them do even better than they are currently, so. I don't know. I don't want it to fail, I guess. It's like, I don't want anything to fail, because I, I, it has franchises I like, right? Like, yeah. Um, just want things to do better. You don't want them to fail and yeah. crash and, you know, um, so on. EA Sports will, will still be doing well. Look, it doesn't matter, like, yeah, here's they, the thing. They're, they're gonna do Madden, well because it's they're, they're sports good. games right it's sports games they yeah. sell like it doesn't matter how good or bad they are they sell every year if they didn't they wouldn't make them every year <laughs> you know like sports games are always like the most general it's for the general audience right like you and i are like and i say this all the time because we're always like and anybody that's around us we're always like who buys this stuff well the general audience does like they're they're not necessarily I mean, EA Sports, but like in general with like movies or television shows, we're like, who watches this? Who buys this? It's like the general audience does. Like we are not the general audience. We are the people that know all the ins and outs of all this stuff that's going on. We 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 watch all the not necessarily drama, but all the things going on behind the scenes, right? So I don't think the general audience does. When they see like a movie. They they just see it like advertised on TV or on a website, and they're like, "I want to go watch that." And, we're, and some of us are left scratching our heads, like, "How could something so dog shit make so much money?" Well, that's because the general audience liked it, not necessarily because people like us like it. Uh, in the know, what were you gonna say, DT? I I, I kept ranting. I would say that, that that being said, I I got the newest FIFA though. Like you know what I mean? Like I I haven't bought a sports game in so damn long, but like. Cause I used to be somebody that bought them every year. Like I would buy the NBA two K's or the NBA lives and then the FIFA's right. Like, like years ago, I would buy like both of them every year, every year I'd get both of them. And then like sometime around 10 years ago, I was like, I, I stopped that like 2012 is kind of when I stopped. Cause I remember getting FIFA 13 and then that was it. I, I stopped playing them. And then it wasn't until like last year where I was like, you know what? I kind of miss playing FIFA. So I bought 23 because it was on sale. And, you know, I would enjoy it more if they didn't have to fucking make you every time you want to play it, do some secure boot bullshit. So EA, get your <laughs> get your stupid <laughs> shit fixed, man, because that shit annoys me, dude. You guys should have been so voice with us the other annoying. night. DT and the, some of the others were talking about this. And I was like, I had forgotten about the secure boot thing. Uh, Stupid happening. ass secure boot, man. It's fucking dumb, dude. Like if, like, uh, no, don't, don't. I don't. I don't even want to get started on it because it eats <laughs> me up, bro. I hate that shit so fucking much, man. God damn, I hate that shit. It, it pisses me off so goddamn much. But anyway, but you, but you bring up a good point, which is like you used to buy those sports games every year. I used to be the same way with Madden, and the reason why is it's very simple. 
I bonded with sports with my dad, right? And like it, it's a game that we could both play together. Um, yeah. Even though he would trounce me because I'm a child trying to play football, like I know what's going on. Um, but it was a thing to like hang out with your parent uh, for for me anyway to hang out with like my dad and play football. Like we always bonded over sports. Um, so. I, 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 just to, like the EA sports games are always going to make money just because the general audience is like everybody can get into it like when Paula was getting into football like she even thought about getting a Madden and learning to play the football right like we talked about it in, in Discord um, uh, with the video game so yeah those games will always make money um, so they'll be fine yeah and it's probably good for them to kind of split up, split that up too, because those are two completely different genres. That that sports, EA Sports is just so much, not bigger, but it's just so big on its own. Like, does it need to be rolled into the entertainment part? Not really. Yeah. No. Um. But yeah, I I hope it's a success. Like, I don't want failures. I don't want people to lose their jobs or anything like that. Um. And I'm kind of curious to this will, what we'll see in the next, you know, 10 years. Uh, if this, because this will be one of those things that you're not going to know the success of for a very, 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 very long time. All right, DT, I think that's enough on the EA things. What do we got next, bud? Next up. Well. We're going to be talking about that thing I just mentioned about Immortals of Avium. They mm. has been delayed for a month. Um, so originally, um, it was supposed to be releasing on July 20th, which is next month. But they pushed it uh, a month after that to in a couple of days to August 22nd. Um, there's a full statement signed by developer uh, Ascendant Studios and the game's director Brett Robbins that says, as you know, this is our first game as a self-funded independent studio. We set out five years ago to ambitiously make an original magic FPS in a new fantasy world. Along the way, we worked through a pandemic, built a new team, developed on Unreal Engine 5.1, and Push the boundaries of what we thought was possible. Now the finish line is in sight. The recent feedback to the game proves to us what we already felt, that Immortals of Avium is something special. In order to realize our full vision, we're going to take a few extra weeks, making our new launch date Tuesday, August 22nd. This will give us time to further polish the game, finish optimizing all platforms, and deliver a strong launch. We owe it to ourselves and to you to get this right. So that's what they had to say about it. And yeah, you know, good luck to them. Um, everything that I have seen from this game personally isn't going to really do much for me. But I mean, you know, hopefully they they, they do well and then they, they're able to you know get everything right. Because as we know, you release a game at launch and it's not good. It's kind of forever your kind of legacy at, at that point. Um, even games that have released bad and then eventually were kind of helped along the way over the course of its you know lifespan, like uh, No Man's Sky and Battlefront Two, or you know. Like we acknowledge that that you know the, the things that they did, but you know to a lot of other people out there that don't realize they're kind of still at that game that was released, you know, uh, poorly, like badly, you know. So yeah, good luck to them, man. I honestly, I was kind of hoping this game would surprise me because I kind of feel like the same as DT. Like it doesn't really uh grab me or or make me super interested just in what i've seen like but i was like i always kind of hope a thing will come out and just have like 
the best reviews ever. And like, and it's something that maybe it didn't interest me at first, but it's like the reviews are so good. I couldn't ignore it. Right. So I was kind of hoping for that with this game. Um, um, it's cool that they're delaying it. So even if it is a month to be like, yeah, we, we're not up to where we really need to be. So we're going to delay it and get it all polished up. So that's cool, at least. Um, and I'm really interested to, to see how it is when it when it when it comes out um, uh, next month, I guess now. Huh. Well, two or months be two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. My my uh, my timeline is getting messed up here because I, I was looking at July and I was like, it's July. No, it's not. We got a few more days till <laughs> yeah. July. So uh, <laughs> we do. I mean, I mean, it might as well be, though. Right. Like we're <laughs> close enough. We got what? One, two, three, four, four more days. <laughs> Damn, dude, we're already almost in July. That's crazy, bro. I know, right? I say this it every year, but it's crazy how quickly time passes, man. We're already halfway through the year. That's, that's nuts. It's okay, DT. I'm going to close my eyes any minute. We'll be in the year 2030, I'm sure. Um, Shit. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, what's next, bud? All right. Next up after that have uh the nintendo direct so this past uh, week we had a nintendo direct happen in the wee hours of the morning over in my neck of the woods um and i've seen some of this well i, I watched all of it but like i didn't watch all of it if that makes sense i kind of like skimmed through it because no i got you there's a lot of like for me, Nintendo has a lot of like there's a lot of stuff they do that I don't really care about to be honest. I'm the same. I agree. So I kind of just look out for like I have a switch, you know, and I there are things that I look out for, but there's a lot of stuff that they do that I'm just like, I don't really you know, this isn't for me. So yeah. But let's take a look at this, Josh. So we're gonna we're gonna look through this. And we're going to talk about what they did. So it was a Nintendo Direct on the 21st, which was last Wednesday. And they talked about a lot of games. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So the first thing that they talked about was the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the hidden treasure of Area Zero. Um... They have a little video for that. It's basically DLC, uh, new areas, characters, and activities, and the teal mask and the indigo disc. Um, then they showed off a little bit more about Sonic Superstars, which is the new Sonic title, uh, showing off the abilities of each of the characters that we'll have in the game is what they showed there. Then they showed off this game called Palea. Which I had already, I've signed up for that, for the, uh, uh, what you call it, the, like, tests, like, if, you know, if I get into one of the, the, the play tests for it. Yeah. Um, for PC. Um. Yeah, I think I signed up, too. I signed up, like, forever ago, and it was, like, announced on one of the gaming, like, shows or whatever. Like forever ago, you know what I mean? Yeah, I remember it's ages. It's been a been a minute. So yeah, I signed up for that like forever ago. And um So I still haven't gotten anything any heard anything from them. But yeah, that game looks like a nice little like wholesome like kinda kinda dealio. So I'm we'll see what happens with that, but uh then they talked about Persona 5 Tactica. Yeah. I'm sure Josh wants to check out. So if you want to. Yeah, let's photo, watch it. We can, we, can, we can check it out. It's, it's a minute 20. So it'll be quick. Let's uh, do it. Except my uh, YouTube does not want to load right now. Give me two seconds. Yeah. No there we go. I got it. We're good. I'm All ready. Right, let's do it. Three, two, one. Let's go. Snap. Ignite your heart. 
Ignite your heart, DT. I mean, I, I gave up on that. Tactical spin-off of Persona 5. When the group ends up in an unfamiliar world, they must join forces with a revolutionary named Arena to combat the armies that have taken control. During battle, assess the situation and determine whether to unleash an attack up close, from afar, or using a persona. Persona. Knock enemies down to perform another action called one more. You've never yes, played Persona, have you, DT? Nope. Is it on your? It's on your list, right? Eventually, one day, maybe. Yeah, it's on my radar. Ability from the Persona series Especially since they're remaking like a lot of these Persona games, you know, like the third one, they uh, are doing a remake for, so I might check that out. Oh, the soundtracks world. are so good. A revolutionary tale will ignite when Persona 5 Tactica launches on Nintendo Switch. November but yeah, I, I think this looks cool. Um, I, uh, local retailers. I told Majin, like, even though, like, the characters are, like, chibi and small and, like, Animu is foot, like, I yeah. still want to check it out because it's Persona. And Persona 5 was, like, my first Persona ever, and it was so good, like, so good um, that I will be checking out anything that's Persona in the future as well. So, it's on the old radar for me. It, also, it's XCOM Persona. Like, that's... Yeah. That's made for me. They saw how much I liked Persona Five, and they were, and they saw how much I liked the XCOM DT, and they were like, "We're gonna make a game this just for is, that fat this dude." This be for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That's not where I thought you were gonna go with that. <laughs> I can't. Oh shit, dude. My goal yeah, was to make everybody is... laugh all the time. <laughs> we're gonna make this here. for Josh. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, nah. Man. There's a lot of cool, like, uh, tactical, like, XCOM style kind of games coming out recently. Like, I know that Aliens game just came out too. And oh man, I'm dying to get my hands on. I that. haven't, uh, I haven't really seen anybody play it. But man, when you get, when you get it, I'll, I'll definitely watch you play that one because that it looks cool, man. Like it really does. And then like the fact that you can like make your own, you know, characters and stuff. Like that's one of the coolest things about like XCOM, right? Is that you can create your own characters and customize them and whatnot. Yeah. So. We can never save Tyler. Yeah, try five, so hard. Fives, you know, he's just that's just his fate. In video games. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's like if I want everybody else to live, I just put Tyler on a mission, and the boy will go get shot, and they all live. Like it happens every time. Right. Or kidnapped. He got kidnapped one time. And we rescued him. I remember that. Oh, I XCOM I that too. Actually, I love XCOM. Yeah. Good old, good old, good old XCOM. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Myth Force, which I tried playing the demo for this, and for some reason they make you connect your account to Epic Games, even though it's on Steam. And I connected it, and it would not work. So I, the demo didn't work for me because it just refused to connect to Epic Games. Um, so I didn't get a chance to play this, but the demo is out for that. If you want to, want to try it out, it wouldn't work for me. But, you know, uh, it looks cool. It's like a Saturday morning cartoon kind of video game with, you know, fantasy, you know, high fantasy kind of deal. Uh, Splatoon 3, Splatfest. I don't, I've never played the Splatoon games. It looked kind of fun, but I, I've never played them. Um, I know, I know I had, I know I knew people who played them all the time. Um. Detective Pikachu returns. I, I let, let's check this out because I okay. I I just want to hear Pikachu talk in a in like a like a person. So let, 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 let's check this out. I never played the first one, but I watched the movie. The movie was fun. If they you know make this into another movie as well, then that'll be cool. So let let let's check it out. Three, two, one. stronger bond between the people and Pokemon of Rhyme City. I hereby proclaim this day the start of Pokemon Friendship Week. Tim Goodman. Pikachu. 
You two are the ideal detective duo. Disguises are a key part of detective work. Quit goofing off and investigate. Ah, so much for my coffee. Something tells <laughs> bro. me. Bro. This is just a beginning. I just... Pikachu with this voice, bro. A Let's... light roast today, huh? Hilarious. Ridiculous. There is something the two of you must know. You, you too. too. Based on our deductions, the culprit is clear, isn't it? Uh, a bolt of brilliance. The name's Pikachu. And I'm what you might call a great detective. It's a great detective, Josh. I sure <laughs> somebody would bring me some coffee. Hey, that Pikachu really likes coffee, man. Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, that's 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 a little Ridiculous too ridiculous for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we can watch the big surprise of the thing, which is the Super Mario RPG. Uh originally released for Super Nintendo. Uh the remake will arrive this year on November seventeenth. Uh so let's check it out. This is two minutes long. Alright, three, two, one, go. Look at that. Damn. Whoa, 2023. Man, it looks crazy. Man, he just kicked the shit out of that Donkey Kong, man. Pink ass star right there. So what do you think, Josh, of that? Because though you said you you hadn't seen that yet, right? You wanted. I'm not. Know. I haven't seen anything that we've seen other than the Persona Five Tactica. Um. Uh. Looks neat. I, I feel like I have some vague memories of playing like the old version, but. Hmm. I was like a baby when it came out. No, I wasn't a baby. I was like six when it came out. I might as well be a baby. Um, but I feel like something in there like just strikes me as like a memory somewhere in my brain of pl having played the old version. Um, I'd probably check out the new version. Like uh, I like RPGs, so seems kind of kind of cool. Yeah, so the first one came out in 96. Damn. Right. It's a long, long time ago. A long, long time ago. <laughs> All right. Then after that, we had a new a new peach game they're coming out with an untitled peach game finally after so long she's getting her own you know game 
uh luigi's mansion dark <clears throat> moon uh an enhanced version was uh announced for later this year and then the batman arkham trilogy is coming to the switch as well arkham asylum arkham city and arkham knight all with their dlc will be arriving in the fall gloomhaven is coming on september 18th just dance 2024 on october 24th silent hope which is a action rpg where seven warriors will join together uh, with changing dungeons to face monsters. That's releasing on October 3rd. And then we got a game for all the Animal Crossing uh, Stardew Valley people, which is called Fae Farm. Uh, Farm Sim RPG making a comeback uh, on its, on the September 8th release date. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. Coming on October 19th. And then let's check out this game, Manic Mechanics, because this looks, it's kind of like Overcooked, but with car mechanics. So, yeah, I'm let me get this open. This, one. this is coming out next, like in a couple weeks, I believe. July All 15th. Right. So, yeah, a few weeks from now. So, let's, let's check it out. I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. Welcome to Octane Isle, where we'll do anything to keep our motors running. Life is fast-paced around here. And sometimes things can get a little hectic. If you and your crew have what it takes to become manic mechanics, then grab your tools and get on over here. Okay, so I got uh I like the like the style of game, like the overcooked style of games. Like there's like moving out, you know, and like, you know, all these different versions of the sim game. So I was just curious to see what this one would look like and it's not bad, but yeah. definitely like you need like like a like a group of people to play these with. Cause like sometimes I feel like playing overcooked, but I'm like, I'm not playing that alone. That's that's you know what I mean? Like you need you need people to play that one with. Um, but yeah, the next thing that they showed off was, uh, uh, Super Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope DLC. It'll be the second DLC, uh, for that game, I believe. Showing off a musical role with new areas and enemies to face. And they, I believe it's already out as well. That that DLC. Uh, Dragon Quest Monsters: The Dark Prince. Uh, combine monsters from the Dragon Age or Dragon Quest franchise to help you on your quest and become a master of monster kind. Uh, this one is scheduled to release on December first. And then, like another one of the big things they had this uh, direct was. A new look at Pikmin 4, showing off some new mechanics and game modes, uh, as well as uh, some scenarios and areas to explore. And this this game will be released on July 21st, which is about a month from now. That's my birthday. And there, <laughs> oh well, there you go. It comes out they, on do, my birthday. You, you're getting uh, you're getting a lot of stuff on your birthday this year. Barbie, Oppenheimer, Pikmin right. 4, man. Hey. <laughs> I mean, it makes mm. sense because it's a Friday. Usually, Friday is a good day for shit to release. So, mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Uh, a demo will be available in two days. So, on Wednesday, you can get a demo. Oh, that's cool. Four. And then there's a Pikmin 1 and 2 HD uh, versions coming out, or they're already out on the eShop as well. The Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 is coming to the Switch as well. Be releasing on October 24th. Uh, Vampire Survivors is coming to the Switch with the option of couch co-op. It will be released on August 17th. Vampire Survivors is fun. Uh, Headbangers Rhythm Royale is a musical battle royale with pigeons. Total of 20 minigames. Rhythm will be key. Arrives on October 31st. 
Pong, get rid of them. Sorry. Song stuck in my head. <laughs> Johnny Cash. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you Penny's got it. Big, Penny's <laughs> big breakaway in this 3D platform game from the creators of Sonic Mania, you will discover a colorful world where you use a yo yo as a part of our arsenal. That will be released early next year. Then, of course, because it feels like these never end, the Mario Kart Booster course is on Wave 5 now. Uh, with three new characters and eight new tracks, Wave 5 will be available in the summer of this year. Star Ocean, the second story R, 2D and 3D graphics, a uh, remake of the classic Star Ocean, will be available on November 2nd. WarioWare Move It, featuring over 200 mini games. Uh, the WarioWare franchise is back to keep gamers on their toes on November 3rd. And then we have uh, some new Tears of the Kingdom Amiibo. They're going to be coming out this holiday. And Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which is a new 2D Super Mario announced with new visual style and the continuation of four-player co-op. Super Mario Bros. Wonder will be released on October 20th, 2020. And that is the Nintendo Direct for June 21st. So out of all of that, Josh, what was the thing that stood out the most? Which, I mean, you know, probably, um, if I had to imagine, not a lot in here, but like the, the thing, if I had to guess for you, is probably Persona or... or Persona. Or what is it? I think Persona looks good. Uh, the Mario RPG looks good. I'm looking through this Star Ocean thing. That looks like it would be something that interests me. Um, no, we did not. Uh, we can watch this. We can watch the Super Mario Bros. Wonder because we it. didn't watch it. So, so let's check it out. Yeah, I wish uh, Nintendo appealed to me a little bit more. They they're not really usually like I was never a big Nintendo guy. I like some of the stuff they do though. All right, three, two, one, go. I feel you. I'm I'm kind of the same with Nintendo though. I like I, you know, funny enough, my first like console that was mine mm -hmm. is a uh, was an N N64. Right. Same. And I feel like there was a lot more variety from games on that than there is nowadays. Like, like crazy to think that I played like Conker's Bad Fur Day on the N64, but nowadays you can't get anything like that on there, you know what I mean? Or on a yeah. Nintendo console. More, more, more. Well, that's trippy. I was gonna say is Mario on shrooms, but the answer is yes. Right. He's always on shrooms. Yep. Got them shrooms on deck, dude. <laughs> Shrimpy Mario does look a little weird <laughs> when they showed him <laughs> at the start. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers Wonder. It's your boy Luigi. <laughs> Luigi time. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Luigi time. Oh no. Yoshi. Super Mario Bros. Wonder. October 20th. Oh, wait, oh, wait, there's more. There's more. They tricked me. He turned into an elephant. Oh, no. His elephant Mario. That's... How dare they put me in this game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there it's you go. It's a good That's podcast, guys. 
We had a two fat jokes in here. We're right. Um. <laughs> uh, Throwing some Yoshi for you guys. There, yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's a Nintendo Direct. So yeah, you uh, you you were saying that uh, you're looking at the uh, or or you know Persona stood out, or Mario RPG, and then you're looking at the Star Ocean thing. Yeah, the Star Ocean thing seems like it'd be like a me thing. Um, I could see that. Um, but yeah, how about you? Anything for you? Um. I don't know, like, not really. Like, a lot of the stuff on here, it's like, I have Mario Kart, but I never got the booster course pack because I just don't play it anymore. You know, I don't, I haven't played it in a long time. And some of the stuff on here is just like, I, like, it looks, some of it looks kind of cool, but I'm like, am I going to get it? Probably not. I mean, the thing that probably stands out the most for me is probably the, the, the manic mechanic game and Palea, but like, the thing is with those games i'm just gonna play them on pc you know so it's not really right. like a thing that stands out to me on you know for the switch you know so yeah i don't there isn't really nothing for me this uh nintendo direct i i gotta i gotta say you know um i feel like um miss some of you guys might think i'm being a shitty snob when i say this the 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 further along we get without a switch to the even less interested i am in nintendo games just because they look so old at times and like so dated like maybe i'm a snob like if the gameplay is there for some things i can overlook that but it gets a little harder um for for me um as we get more in its life cycle of the of the og switch like when we looked at what did we look at? Which one was it? We looked at something. I get. I think it was Persona Five. When I was looking at it, and I was like, I saw like some of the textures and stuff on the side, and they're they're a little like pixelated, pixelated, and not looking really that good at times in the back. And it's just like your normal person doesn't notice that, but I notice that, right? So for me, it it can kind of make it a little bit harder for me to be. And on the Switch a little bit. Um, it's like they're putting the Batman trilogy on the Switch too. And I, I can't help but be like, man, that's not going to look good. You know, <laughs> like it's not going to like graphically look like it would if it was on the PC or even on one of the consoles, main consoles. Right. So uh, that that's kind of like why I have a maybe a hard time now with Nintendo. Maybe as before I didn't like it, I just I need like a Switch two. Which I couldn't afford to switch to anyway right now, but like the, the graphically, it's a little a little hard for me. Um, yeah, it's funny how you notice this shit as you get older, right? It's like when it when it comes to like graphics and things. Like when I was a kid, I never thought, man, I just thought everything looked cool. Like as a kid, I'm like, that looks cool, that looks cool. Like none of that bothers me. Now that I'm an adult, and like, and. <laughs> my tastes are the way they are now and it's like and i've had a good pc for a very long time right like i can't help but notice it um yeah now i gotcha anywho what we got next dt next up we're gonna talk about final fantasy 16 and your boy yoshi p because uh he says that 16's pc version is next up on his to-do list Makes sense. Uh, the so the long saga of trying to figure out when PC players like myself will be able to play Final <laughs> Fantasy 16 continues. Although there's no still no release date for it, producer uh, Naoki Yoshida says the PC version is still in development and that you'll hear more about it when it gets closer to the finish line. Speaking on a recent stream, uh, Yoshi P said that the PC version still needs work in order to mirror the ps5 version of the game specifically citing its lack of loading screens when traveling between locations and transitioning from cutscenes to gameplay he says that the team hasn't had the time to optimize the pc version of the game because they've been busy with the ps5 version we'll be bit we'll be sharing more about the pc version when the time is right please look forward to it he said echoing a sentiment he share often shares when talking about upcoming features for the other final fantasies he's in charge of uh final fantasy 14 you know, really quickly before I continue the rest of this, I always think it's funny when like you 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 always see like you know Japanese P 
people talk about like you know whenever they're showing off their games or they're, they're always like at the end they're always like please look forward to it you know like right. I, I don't know there's something about that that i always think is kind of kind of funny like like yes we are looking forward to it you know <laughs> but it's mm-hmm. still funny that you say that anyway uh but yeah uh final fantasy 16's pc version has been in flux from the moment the game was announced in 2020 with the trailer that stated a pc version would be available Square Enix wouldn't even say a word about it afterward. And then uh, Yoshi P denied, briefly denied that it existed earlier this year. Just a month later, he was on the Japanese PlayStation blog talking about a, releasing a PC version so, sometime after its six month PS5 exclusivity deal expires. The producer said, even if we start optimizing the PC version after the PS5 version comes out, we won't be able to optimize it in half a year. So it won't come out in a short span of half a year. So the wait continues, but it's good to know that it is on their priority list. Yeah. Uh, for next thing in line, because I, everything I've seen from that game looks fire as hell, and I can't wait to get a chance to play it when I when it comes to PC. Because yeah, it looks looks awesome. I you know I really like Yoshi P. Like um, look most i feel like most game devs wouldn't even think about like we know it's coming to pc they would never like here's what we're doing next right we're gonna work on the pc version like i feel like most wouldn't even mention it right but yoshi p he's like listen this nice thing we're doing he wants to give hope to those people that are waiting for the pc version like udt and i'm sure tons of other people that are waiting yeah. um so I, i'm glad that he addresses it mentions it it's like listen this is what we're working on it's next it's coming um for those of you that wait, so I just, I don't know. It just makes me like and respect Yoshi P even more, and I already did like him, so. Um, it's pretty cool of him to, to, to say that. We get yeah. next, DT. Awesome. Or, yeah. All right. Um, next up. We have Bethesda's Indiana Jones game is going to be a Xbox console exclusive. This is news that came out. Uh, the deal with Disney was initially for multiple platforms, but changed after the Microsoft acquisition. Bethesda Softworks' upcoming Indiana Jones game is exclusive to Xbox consoles and PC, the head, head of publishing Pete Hines said during the Microsoft and Activision Blizzard Federal Trade Commission hearing last Thursday. The game is expected to be available at release on Xbox Game Pass. Bethesda announced that the project's development in 2021, just months after Microsoft announced its acquisition of ZeniMax Media, of which Bethesda is under, in a $7.5 billion deal. That deal, which is finalized in March of 2021, Machine Games, responsible for the most recent Wolfenstein games, is developing the game under Disney's Lucasfilm Games label. No release, timing, or platform information were given at that time. The new details on the Indiana Jones platform exclusivity were revealed during Heinz's testimony in a San Francisco court. Heinz revealed that ZeniMax's original agreement with Disney would have put the Indiana Jones game on multiple consoles. After Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax was announced, Disney had questions regarding console exclusivity, despite the signed agreement, and the FTC lawyer added. The contract was later amended to make Indiana Jones and Xbox exclusive, Hines confirmed. He also added uh, that Bethesda signed an agreement with Disney before the Microsoft acquisition and said that Bethesda was an independent publisher that couldn't afford to miss while it while it. Uh, was fighting publishers that are already multiple times lo- uh, larger. He confirmed that Disney wanted to reach to be as large as possible and that Bethesda, Bethesda felt it had to meet that need. But after the acquisition that changed, Heinz said there were several different reasons for that change, including the idea of how many players would it would bring to the Xbox Game Pass. Microsoft and Bethesda are also looking to reduce risk around meeting the demands of the licensor. Heinz related this back to the topic he discussed earlier regarding the irresponsibly large game, where Bethesda was benefited by being able to support the game on fewer platforms. Last year, Todd Howard, who executive produced the game, called Indiana Jones' game a bucket list project. Um, 
And as popular as the franchise has been, there's been very little in the way of Indiana Jones video games other than the Lego adaptations uh, being the most recent stuff. So there you have it, guys. Indiana Jones is going to be is not going to be on PlayStation and the Switch, basically. So it'll be on Xbox and PC and Game Pass, of course. Um, so, you know, it sucks for everybody else who doesn't want to play it or, or who can't play it because they don't have a PC or an, or an Xbox. But, you know, sometimes things change and that's the way the cookie crumbles, I suppose, huh? Yeah. Um, it's one of the downsides of like monopolies, right? And like exclusives and things. I, it, it does like the whole like whole Microsoft PlayStation this then Blizzard thing that's ongoing right now. A lot of interesting info is coming out of that uh, as well. Yeah. Um, and this is like one of those things right so um i mean as we're doing this podcast i see wario tweet out something about uh that microsoft considered acquiring bungie and sega to bolster the game pass There's yeah you know, with some with some screenshots of emails and stuff too so you know, that's crazy but anyway continue yeah yeah um which my thought process on that is like Microsoft, you can't own everybody. <laughs> like, you know, like you can't like I know you want to. I know for you it's good. For the consumer, it's not not like um uh it's it's weird because like I'm fine with them taking Blizzard, right? Like because for uh, Activision Blizzard, I should say. Um yeah. Because I I want things to change over there, and I I, I I like a lot of the stuff that Microsoft has been doing with the things that they acquire. Uh, but at the same time, like there needs to be a point where they stop, right? Because if it all gets under one big giant umbrella, it's it's not good for you, me, or anybody that plays games to be like beholden to this one company, right? Like this one massive monopoly it's it's is no good um so it's it's complicated as fuck there's a lot of interesting news that comes out of this stuff like that i'm fascinated it's things you would never hear about otherwise right if they weren't doing this it's like hearing all this stuff about like this like the indiana jones thing or um some of the stuff they have said with like I think Starfield and like other other stuff coming out of that. It's like I wish I was a more educated person to be able to go through all that and understand all of it and what this line of text here means and why that's very important. I'm not. Um but what is what does come out and is simple enough for me to understand, I find absolutely fascinating. Um and and how big businesses do business and, and this whole merger or uh, acquisition thing with Activision Blizzard is fascinating. Uh. Yeah, all that's some crazy stuff. Man. It it really is, yeah. All right, if we're ready though, we can move on to the next thing. Sure. She still got a couple things here. Uh, the next one is. According to the LA Tourism Board, uh, E3 2024 and 2025 are canceled. However, the ESA says no official decision has been made yet. So uh, they're saying, you know, insiders, people are, you know, Again, according to the LA Tourism Board, are saying that EA is going to be canceled or EA E3 is going to be canceled. But let's be real, Josh. Like E3 yeah. is not what it once was. It has not been for a number of years. The pandemic and and COVID and all that stuff did not help uh, no. bringing it back either, and, and and you know all that. So like, why? 
why do they feel so strongly the need to to bring it back? Because I think like Jeff Keeley's got it locked down now with Summer Game Fest. That's the thing, the right? He's doing with that, you know. Yeah, it's E three is dead, dude. Like I have no problem saying that it's dead because you go this long without a show. Jeff has moved in. What the fuck do you think is going to happen in the next couple of years that's going to change ESA? Like, it's dead, dude. Just admit it. Like, uh, and I'm not even trying to be like a shitbag about it. It's just the fact that you've gone this long without one. Somebody else has already filled that void. They're not going to come back to you. And the longer you go without doing one, they're definitely not going to come back to you because they see how much, one, it's easier. Like, they don't have to stress about getting something ready for an E3 show, right? All these big get big time game devs have learned we don't need to do that. We can just do our own little show like for ourselves when we're ready. Like and the longer yeah, like you go without one, like come on man, you're dreaming if you think this is going to happen. Everybody does their own thing now. And then like everything that EA used to be or E3 used to be like PC gaming show and you know the Xbox with that like that's all summer game fest now. Mhm. Mm like, like, what are you going to do at E3? Like, what, what's going to be different from Summer Game Fest that, you know, you're going to be doing differently? Like, everything that they used to do is now a part of Summer Game Fest. So I don't understand what they're going to be having that is not, you know what I mean? Like, what what are they going to do? Like, when, when was the last fucking E3? Was it, like, 2019? I think, maybe. Because it's, it, like... <laughs> I don't. I'm a look. There, I'm looking. There was okay. There was one in 2021, but it was an online one. That you know. I mean, come on. The last in-person one was 2019. I want to say. Yeah. So yeah, it's. I mean. And even yeah. then, in 2019, Sony didn't wasn't there. Like, they 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 weren't there. They opted not to go. Um, yeah, everybody does their own thing now. Like, it doesn't like what are they, what do they plan on doing? Like, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. You know, I don't think it happens. I don't think it'll ever. They might, in a few years, there might be like, uh, what is it like? A, I want us to be like, it'll be a reunion episode. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. it'll be like. A, and and people will show up to that maybe if that happens, but I don't see it in the next few years happening, like at all to be honest. Like, I think um, it's just think, easier like, for everybody, like everybody that's we, involved in it, not to do that. We're we're just in different times now, man. Like E3 yeah. made more sense, you know, like twenty years ago when we didn't have like the ability to stream at any given moment. You know, like when the company, you know, when all these you know, companies couldn't just stream on their own. You know what I mean? Like that's cause that's what they do now, you know? So it made mm -hmm. sense to have everything all together, you know, and for, you know, a couple of weeks in June or whatever. But like now it's like, you know, people do their, they, they these companies do their own thing, man. Like, yeah, it just, it's and just not like, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't expect this shit to all be the same. It was. And then like, they haven't had a show in four years. Like just, you know, how do you recover from that? You know? And that's the it's oh. the next thing. They refuse to adapt, right? Like the ESA and E3, they refuse to adapt. You want to know how I know they refuse to adapt? Because Jeff Keighley runs Summer Games Fest now, right? Like, yeah. he he adapted. He he had the vision. He saw, right, what he could do. And he does it. Um, uh, so, like, not to be a turd, but you missed the boat, my guys. Like, um... You know, somebody that was a little bit more forward thinking kind of got on there and, and made that other stuff possible. And you, you guys were just kind of worried about the in-person event that kind of got dated and old. Is it a bummer? Uh, yeah, I grew up with it. I liked E3 um, as a kid and getting up early to watch all the conferences and stuff. And like, yeah, I thought it would have been cool to go a year or something and, and check it out. But man, times changed and you didn't. So. Um, unfortunately, that's, that's just the way it is. Yep. 
That's the way it is. All right. All right. Well, we can move on then. Uh, we got a couple things here left, though. Uh, one of which is um, Xbox Perfect Dark reboot is still years away. At game at the Game Awards 2020, Xbox unveiled a new game from its fledgling studio, The Initiative, a reboot of Perfect Dark. The two-minute trailer was purely cinematic, showing off its eco-futuristic Earth as the camera soared over the massive city bedecked in greenery. After zipping through a skyscraper, we saw a woman gazing in the distant at distant pyramids and amid a raging storm. Have you found what you're looking for, Agent Dark? A voice asked. Not yet, replied Joanna Dark. This is only the beginning. Three years later, developer of the initiative is still in many ways only at the beginning. Uh, at the time of the trailer, created by an external CG house was shown. It was very obviously way far ahead of anywhere the game was at, according to one developer who was working on the initiative at the time. We hadn't even figured out any of our core game mechanics. We didn't even really know what type of game we were making. But as we know, teasing new games with cinematic trailers years before the game itself is ready is a common practice in the industry um but the initiative's radio science combined with the reports of major attrition at the studio have sparked questions about the project uh exasperated by its recent absence from the game xbox games uh or summer game showcase the concern is not only unfounded uh or the concern is not unfounded according to conversations with 13 sources familiar with the game's development Little meaningful progress has been made on the game since that 2020 trailer. Uh, the answer isn't glamorous, but the realities of game development. The project has seen roadblock after roadblock with problems such as uh, co-development partnership, pandemic, technological challenges, ongoing exodus of significant talent, and unclear direction from management keeping the game in development limbo. And while uh, and with a new partnership with the Crystal Dynamics appears to be finally bearing fruit, multiple sources who have worked on the game recently say that Perfect Dark is still in the earliest stages of development, estimating that it's still roughly two to three years away from being ready for release. Um. So yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. They have IGN has a whole full article talking about it all. But so if you want to go check it out, definitely go do that because they uh, they got a full ass article talking about it all. But it's kind of crazy because this is one of those games that when it was first announced, I was like so ready for this because I remember playing the OG on the N64. So I, yeah, I was all about it, man. Yeah, I never played them. I never played the Perfect Darks. I know you were you were all about it. Uh, I think when this kind of got announced, I remember you talking about it. Yeah, I was um, so like I said, I played the original on on the the N sixty four. So I was as soon as I saw that, I was I was ready. Yeah. I feel like I read somewhere, and this is great. I saw when I say this that they had like some issues, uh, with just things changing at the studio, um, and and that may have had an effect on this as well. So. It it, but it is kind of wild to me that it's like, yeah, we're still two or three years away from this, and like we've known about it for three so years. long, so long, right? Like it almost makes you uh, think of fucking like the Duke Nukem shit at times. <laughs> Hopefully, not the same result. Um, I, I don't think I just, it would be. It's, uh, it sucks whenever they announce a game and that's still like so many years away. Like, don't even. I almost feel like they they should they don't even do that like don't even talk about a game until you're like you know ready like in, unless it's like a couple years away at, at the at most like don't even don't even talk about it like I don't right like they did this so wanna, early I don't want to hear about it yeah. and like when they're like we didn't even have our core game concepts or any of that stuff down I'm like then you definitely shouldn't have had a trailer out there yet like. Yeah. You had a CG trailer and you didn't even have the game laid out. That just seems so insane to me. Like, like, and it's the same thing with like, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2, right? Like, 
We've got oh, a trailer. Man, that... They talked. They talked about it, and then like it's just been nothing, right? It's been radio silence. It's like, ugh. That game has just been talked about for what, like ten years now, and it's like, where is it? Like, right. what is going on with that game? Vampire your Bloodlines Masquerade too. Like, what's another game? Like, what the fuck is going on, dude? <laughs> yeah, right, Yorko. <laughs> Yorko says the game trailer will premiere at the next E3. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, Metroid Prime 4, dude. Damn, yeah, that's another one that we've like it's like we're doing it and then like where is it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Crazy. There's a lot of, there's a, there's too many games that are like that. Why why do they do that, man? Why? It's also the worst that. because it's like you're super interested in it and it's just radio silence. It's like we're not even going to tell you we're having issues with it. And it's like, you start to wonder, is it even alive anymore, right? And then it, it, I don't know. I wish there was a little bit more communication. Obviously, I understand, like, there are some things, like, we, we can't talk about this, right? Like, but, like, come on, man. Like, it's a little rough to go. You introduced, the, you, 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 you announced this, like, 10 years ago, and it's been 10 years, and we haven't heard anything about it in that span, really. It's a little rough. To be a fan of a thing and that happened, right? Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, DT, what do we got next? The next, the last thing we have here is just a cool little mod. We don't have to watch the whole video because it's like eight minutes long. I get you. But I thought this was a cool mod. It's basically Marvel Spider-Man game that people modded into Spider-Verse, and you'll see within the per within the like first couple seconds of this. Uh, okay. So let's you know check it out really quickly. So this is from a YouTube channel called DVESF. It's a PC mod for Marvel Spider-Man that turns a game into Spider-Verse. So let's check it out. Three, two, one, go. Again, we won't watch the whole thing, but I just thought it was a cool thing to throw in here because we're kind of we're kind of short on news this week, so I figured why not throw in a you know something fan yeah. made a mod or whatever. And it's not the first time we've done mods or things in here. Yeah, no, 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 it's not. Yeah. So the normal game, and then Spider Verse, baby. Well, that's trippy. <laughs> it's cool, man, and we're about to see it in action here. We'll, we'll watch it for a little bit, and then we'll move on to the next thing. But I think. It, it looks cool, man. Like a whole game like this would be badass, dude. Right. So this brings me to a to a, a question a good question though. Like you remember like years ago when we used to get video games on movies all the time? Right. And and if and like nowadays they don't do that at all. Like I know that generally games that were based off of movies did not do well. But you can't tell me that they were all bad. I feel like some of them were decent. Like, for example, Spider-Man 2 was pretty badass, yeah. right? Yeah. Spider-Man 2 so, was great. So you can't tell me that they're all bad, and that's the reason why they stopped doing them. Like, what? why do you think they stopped making games based off of movies? Because I remember, like, them being such a thing, like, 20 years ago, you know? And now we have, like... Our, uh, none basically like i can't think of one right now that that is well dt based off a fucking movie we we are in fact getting the opposite now we're gonna get movies based on games instead of games based on movies that's true you're, you're, you're very true about that that is that is correct uh, but no i know exactly what you're talking about because it, it did used to be like that right i remember Dude, Lord the, of the Rings, Spider-Man, fucking everything, dude. The, everything the was... Hulk, the Hulk with the with the Eric Bana, right? That one had a movie. Yeah. Uh, I I know. I mean, a, a game. That's the one I I played. I remember playing it, and I thought the game was better than the movie. <laughs> but that's because you're smashing around as the Hulk. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh... Yeah, just like watching this made me wonder, because like, yeah, like I said years ago that's we had a, so many games based off of fucking movies like like i said lord of the rings the spider-man games like i'm pretty sure there was like a fucking van helsing game like there was so many games based off of movies and now it's hard to find 
a game like a game i feel like because there might be some here and there but i can't think of any Bro. off the top of my head do, do you remember so you remember the born identity came out right they had a video game huh? that was that but because of how licensing and all that worked the the it didn't follow the story and jason Bourne did not look anything like matt damon there was oh, just really? <laughs> yes i remember this uh like it was so weird uh you got me thinking about video game movie uh, or sorry movie video I mean, games now yeah because i mean just watching this made me think of that because it's like dude we used to have them so much and now i cannot think of a single one off the top of my head it's crazy it's yeah. crazy definitely definitely interesting how yeah but you're so you're so right though now we're getting fucking movies made about <laughs> video games it's it's, yeah, right? it's like the, the reverse now which is nuts like uh -huh. who would who, who would have thought that like 20 years ago right damn like we're gonna get a ghost of tsushima movie uh which i can't know? wait man they're they're everything i'm dude chad sahelski's doing it and they're like mm -hmm. you know he's a fan of the game and uh you know hopefully they're doing it right i mean they haven't said who they cast as Jin, but I mean, I feel like you got to get the guy, right? I mean, come on, just, just I hope get, they do. Just, just get Dice Kid, dude. He's he's, he's right there, man. Yeah, and but we're anyway. gonna get like TV shows as well. Like, isn't isn't Horizon gonna get a show or movie or something? Horizon, but God of War is getting a TV show. Last like, this, of Us just of... had a show. Like, yeah. it, it's, but it is funny how it like. It was like it just flipped over. It's, it reversed, flipped, yeah. right? Like it's like we got this. We didn't get it for a while, and now everybody's seeing the potential. Like we've talked about wanting a mat. Like this was even before that. We wanted a Mass Effect movie or TV show for years, 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 and years, and it's been talked about for years, 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 and years, right? Like it still hasn't happened. It's crazy. But anyway, we can move on. I just wanted to talk about you know i just wanted to show this because i thought it was a really cool mod for the game yeah we can move and on then, that was a cool uh, thing to talk about though i'm glad you brought and, that up and then just watching it made me remember like man we used to have so many fucking movie video games it was nuts yeah you can tell, um, tell expanse game soon yeah that's true uh but yeah so we have zero tv news for the first time ever in our 164 episodes 65 now yeah uh next. so what's movie news movie news yeah that's the next thing which i only have one thing on here um so we're gonna be done with the news here any second so the only movie news of the week is that Bad Bunny's Spider-Man spinoff, El Muerto, has been taken off of Sony's release calendar. And I wish I had the sad air horn uh, or the sad fail horn on here. That I Oh, wait, actually, hold on. I do have it. Oh, I'm so sorry, Bad Bunny and, and El Muerto. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm all for more uh, diverse characters and i uh as a latino i'm all about more movies like this but this guy's just not a known character like who the hell is in muerto dude like it's just hard to be like yeah we're gonna do this you know with with fucking bad bunny when it's like who the fuck is this guy you know what i mean so yeah i don't just, they, they they gotta I feel like we should be creating new characters and, and just, you know, doing other things, you know, instead of picking out somebody like this where you're like, who? So, yeah, we, we got to oh, we, we gotta do, we gotta do better than that. But the film was originally scheduled for June, January 12th, 2024 has been removed from the studio's calendar uh they also sony also shifted the dates for dumb money which is the movie inspired by the game stock the gamestop stock frenzy which I, I know you guys remember that like a year or two ago or whenever the hell that was a couple years ago uh 
which will open on September 22nd instead of October 20th. Um, but yeah, El Muerto was set in Sony's Spider-Man, uh, uh, Sony's universe of Marvel characters. Uh, would have been the studio's first live-action superhero movie to star a Latino actor. Uh, known in the comics as Juan Carlos Estrada Sanchez, El Muerto is a wrestler whose superhuman powers stem from the ma a special mask that's been passed down through generations. Uh, it's not clear if Spider-Man was going to appear in a film, but El Muerto once faced the web slinger uh, in hopes of unmasking the vigilante before the two ended up joining forces. So, uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're basically, Sony is just trying to do an anti-hero movie verse, which is like kind of lame. I don't know. I, it, all these movies have been not great to be honest with you, but, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's not, not coming out anymore, at least for now, maybe they'll still do it eventually, but for now it's been taken off the thing. Uh, I don't really have much else to say about it. Josh, you got anything you want to add to that or no? I, I like Bad Bunny. <laughs> I guess it's about the way they, I don't know nothing else really about it. So yeah, probably it sounds like a good thing that it's not on the calendar. Uh, I'll be honest. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our news, man. That that'll do it. That's all. That's gonna all do it for got. today's news, gang. Like it's uh, that's it. Like it's a, uh, it is what it is. Like uh. We still have got like almost uh, two hours out of the news. Just us like talking about the gaming news and really kind of going in a little bit deeper maybe than we usually do. But I yeah. had some fun discussions this week, though. Like, uh, like I, I almost feel like I could do a whole podcast on that. You remember when we used to have video game uh, movies based on video or <laughs> games based on movies or whatever the fuck we were talking about? You know, I'm getting them mixed up even in my, in my head right now. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hey, it is what it is. Uh, you can't make news happen. News will just happen. Um, DT, I don't know if I need a break. Do you need a break, or do you just want to move right on in? I don't need one. I'm good with just moving on. Okay. All right, guys. We're just going to go ahead and hop into the second part of the show here, which is we watched a movie. It was originally going to be a different movie, but some weirdness happened, and we swapped it. Um, uh, but we watched... The Sword in the Stone from 1963. Yeah. Walt e. Disney's movie from back in them days mm -hmm. was my pick this time around because I was like, you know what? Well, like Josh said, we we're originally, it was originally going to be another movie, which I'll be doing for my next uh, retro rewind. But I figured, you know what? I haven't seen this movie in forever and let me tell you dude i i might as well have watched this movie for the first damn time because i i didn't i didn't remember none of this i had the same revelation as i was watching it i was like i don't remember I, I, any of it <laughs> i must have watched this as a young ass kid because i don't remember a goddamn thing in this movie bro like i mean do you want to just start talking about it because fuck dude yeah I, let's, let's talk about it just hop right on in man so the Sword in the Stone, Walt Disney's Sword in the Stone from 1963. Off the bat, I I like the animation style. I I you know the hand drawn stuff. Like it's it's cool, man. It's classic. Like I I, I dig it. I I enjoy it. I like it. But dude, I don't remember a goddamn thing in this movie. I was not expecting it to be what it was. Like I didn't. I don't know what I thought it was gonna be, but it wasn't this. See, Cause I don't know how you felt about it, but I was like not ready. For that I, I was like what huh i i i remembered some parts of it but like for the most part like funny enough the part i remember the most like as a kid is like i feel bad for that lady squirrel <laughs> oh man the lady squirrel <laughs> the poor little girl squirrel I, that falls in love with our squirrel arthur <laughs> that's one thing i totally forgot about i did I don't remember that at all, man. And I think that's like about the they, only part I remember. <laughs> like when, like I didn't remember that they were going to be shifting into fucking fish and squirrels. I didn't remember that at all, bro. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Cause I don't remember this at all. Like, obviously, you know, I remember that he's like some kid that 
you know, like at the beginning, he's like, oh, you know, I'm waiting on somebody on this kid to get here. And he's like, oh, not this kid. He's in his 20s or whatever. I'm waiting for this other little kid right here. So that stuff like that is like, OK, makes sense. But yeah, I wasn't I did not remember them like shape shifting and morphing into fucking squirrels and fucking fish and shit. That to me, well, I was like, the fuck are we? What am I watching? Like, it, yeah. it makes sense, but I was like, what the hell? I just couldn't, you know. Like I said, to be honest with you, there are so many Disney movies that I could go back and rewatch that I probably, it'd be like watching them for the first time because I might have, I, I would have would have seen these like years upon years ago, dude. Like, I don't remember a lot of these old ones, like, at all. So that would be the case for me for so many of these Disney movies. And... It definitely proved to be that for this one because I was like, I was I, I couldn't remember like damn near anything about this entire movie. Yeah, no, I I I got you. I I remembered the 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 lady squirrel because I remember even as a kid I was like, oh that's sad, and I remember Mad Madam Mim. Uh, oh man, that just because crazy. I don't like I didn't like her as a kid, and I don't like her as an adult either. <laughs> She's a bitch. <laughs> so, uh, 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 but I, uh, yeah, for the most part, it was like watching the movie for the first time, right? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it, it basically was because yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember anything. Uh, which uh, I did. You like the movie? I, 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 I like it. Like, uh, I, I, as a kid, I was obsessed with like the King Arthur legend and stories, and and would watch. And read just about anything I could get my hands on it, which as a kid was not very much, right? Like, it, it, but was obsessed with it. So, um, I, I, I always have a soft, play, play, soft place in my heart that maybe it's a little biased when it comes to anything that's like King Arthur related or Arth- Arthurian legend related. Like, you guys remember when the Green Knight came out? I was all about that shit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I also forgot how old this fucking movie is, dude. This movie is 63. older. Than, it's older than my dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it, it's it's older than both of my parents for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's older like, this than is, this is. A... It's exactly one year older than my my dad, and many years older than my mom. I I forgot how old it was. Yeah, it's but yeah, old... I had a good time. Good time. I like the I, I like the fine. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say it was like blew me away or anything, but it, you know, it was it was, it was it was cool. It was fine. Um. um I What's just, your favorite I part? Just, the, the thing for me, I just, I just wasn't expecting it to be. Uh, I like fucking Merlin. I think Merlin is like one of the one of my favorite characters in the movie. I think he's just like when, like when you when Arthur first arrives and you, when he falls through the hole, um, you know he's like, oh, you know, I was expecting you, and then like, uh, just, just how like. kind of like forgetful but like willing to like go off on this kind of journey he was you know like like he couldn't remember certain spells for things you know like remember he asked archimedes bibbidi, bibbidi, booty. yeah yeah and, and then like just just how silly and goofy like him and, and and arthur were you know um just like that whole thing when he like when Arthur gets to to um to Merlin was 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 yeah I really enjoyed that that was cool like with him with the books and then like oh you know how much you know sugar do you want and you're and then he's like so tell me when you know and and all that all that stuff was uh <laughs> was, was funny yeah me, so. in a lot I of ways that. the movie's more Merlin's movie than it is or like I feel like we see Mer- Merlin way more than we see young Arthur um yeah and also i forgot just how many references they have to like the future merlin's just straight yeah. up talking one day about flying machines and cars and all this Bro. i'm like i don't remember this at all <laughs> yeah i don't remember any of that dude and like at the end of the movie he says some shit too you know and i'm like huh he's I... wearing modern clothes he's wearing like shorts and like beachwear i was like the fuck i had dude yeah, that shit kind of threw me off a little bit too. I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah, I was not. Yeah. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that at all. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it just, a lot of this movie kind of just threw me off because, yeah, it was like watching it for the first time, man. I had so much I didn't remember. That That's like the main thing for me is just like how I don't remember anything about this movie at all. It was crazy. Like yeah, Madam yeah. Mim, I fucking didn't remember her at all. Uh, and then just going back to the squirrel you were talking about. Like that squirrel was so sad, bro. Like that little that, that girl <laughs> felt squirrel so bad for was so sad. I was like, damn, this this girl squirrel thought Arthur was actually a boy squirrel. That's that's crazy. Yeah. Like yeah, it, it does kind of make you feel bad for a little bit, you know. But then you're like, you know, I don't know. It, it's yeah, it it, it it was it was crazy. Well, one of my favorite parts of that movie is like, well, that's a girl squirrel, and she's a redhead. <laughs> and I was like, oh god, <laughs> they have that joke nah. in here. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a uh, it's it's uh, I feel bad for that that poor girl squirrel. Um, uh, like my one of my favorite parts is the, the wizard uh duel, right? And actually, I think that's one of the parts that animators. Mm point out a lot in this movie is because like they they change through so many like creatures um but they are still yeah. unique enough to be different while also like you can tell this is merlin transformed as like a mouse right because he's blue and oh yeah, yeah you yeah, can yeah. tell this is madame yeah, mim because she's purple and, and or pink and is her you right? like you can tell distinctly you can distinctly tell yeah who who's who when they're when they're you know an animal or a creature you know something else yeah yeah um so i know that's like a big thing for uh some of the people that work in in art and stuff with that with that and it's like it's great uh i forget what word they used and i saw it yesterday and i because uh, i one of the things i do after i watch a a, a movie is I always look up trivia afterwards I'm, I'm sure most of us um do that probably uh because i'm always curious like first thing i do is i go to imdb and i'm like let's look at some of this trivia and so and what's, some see the, what's, uh, true. what's some of the interesting stuff that you found about this movie? Because um, I actually am curious for like you know, so, it's an older movie, right? So yeah, I didn't realize this, but did you know Arthur was voiced by three different boys? Because I didn't realize that. Um, there's a point that like happens I, in the movie at one point where I was like, that sounds different, but I just chalked it up to being like from the nineteen fucking sixty three. You know, yeah. So, I was like, the audio is just not good, but I was wrong. I. I feel like, um, like I could definitely hear it in the movie. Mm. Like, wait a minute, he sounds different, you know, in certain dialogue or certain things he's saying. But I feel like I'd also heard about that. Like they had three different, yeah. Uh, so actors, yeah. It says here, Arthur was voiced by three different boys. The changes in voice are very noticeable in the film because of the way Arthur's voice keeps going from broken to unbroken, sometimes in the same scene. Yeah. One of the e easiest noticed is in the last scene in the throne room when Arthur asks in his changed voice, Oh, Archimedes, I wish Merlin was here. And then the camera cuts to further back and Arthur shouts in his unchanged voice, Merlin, Merlin. And it's a completely yeah. different voice. <laughs> the, the, you, you could definitely hear it. Like I said, like that's one of the things that mm -hmm. I was watching. I was like, wait a minute. Why does he sound different? So why is it? Is it just because like these, these boys uh, were like aging that, or like, I what? think they, I think they had one of the boys, uh, the original voice, uh, his voice, like he hit puberty. Right. And your voice changes yeah, at that that's time. Uh, so it just kind of being, which you can tell, I think one of the, the articles I read was like, it would have been fine if they had told this story, because they're telling the story of Arthur, right? And him getting kind of changing and, and growing. Like, they could have been fine with his voice changing, right? Except that they do it in this, they flip it back and forth in the same scene because they don't stick with it, right? Like, it, it gets a little odd. So it was like, yeah, that, that's kind of like it. Like, it was just one of the actors uh, for Arthur who got older. Um, uh, uh, this is uh, another piece of interesting trivia is that it was the last animated film that uh, Walt Disney himself produced. Like he died during the production of the Jungle Book uh, years later, so this was kind of like the last one that he was a producer of. Um, 
uh walt disney uh never knew it but his the character designer designed the model for merlin based on walt disney um he okay. saw them uh, both as argumentative cantankerous and but playful and intelligent um merlin has uh, walt disney's nose so I, th- I think that's kind of uh, interesting okay didn't know that um let's see what else was there um No, that's not interesting. Uh, when Madame Mim turns herself into a beautiful woman, she's actually based on one of the layout artists that worked at Disney. I found that kind of funny. Um, Damn. Cool. Um. What else? What else? Uh, Here it is. The climactic battle between Merlin and Mad Madam Mim is often cited by animation experts as some of the best character animation to that date. The characters go through numerous physical transformations during battle, yet retain their identifying features. Merlin's guises are blue and include his glasses and facial hair, while Mim's are pink and purple and have her messy hair. So that's 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 where I read that. uh, which I find uh, interesting, fascinating, and like really cool that they did that. Like, like they could have easily hand wave and they're like, eh, they could just be the the creatures, right? Um, and whatever. So, um, yeah. Uh, one of the criticisms I saw for the movie is like they have Arthur with like an American accent, it's like everybody else has, oh, yeah. like <laughs> like uh, British accents. Um. But not Arthur. Arthur's. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, I had a good time with it. It's the first time I'd seen it since I was a kid. And I think some of uh, like I, I was just hanging in Discord watching it. So some of the others, <clears throat> I think, hopped in and joined and watched with me. Like it was uh, like I think everybody was kind of cool like excited to see it again like it'd been so long since we'd seen it um yeah. uh so arthur doesn't have a british accent no he has an american accent uh as a kid yeah he's, um, he's, he's a little he's a little kid in this movie right he's like what 11 yeah. or 12 or something like that yeah something like that like a youngster um yeah uh, kind of being trained by merlin so one of the things i i forgot to mention this earlier it's like i remember i watched this as a kid but where i really know merlin from you you don't laugh at me when i say this is like Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Uh, because he's in. That makes sense. That makes he's sense. in. I think he's in the first one. Um, uh, but I feel like he has a big role in the second one. And I played the second one quite a bit. I've never been like crazy about Kingdom Hearts. Like, I like it. I think it's neat. Fine enough. But it's like so convoluted now to, to like follow all of it with a billion different games. And they're all on different yeah. platforms. Um, but I, I remember Merlin being a big part in that second game and that's what I remember him most from. So like when I saw Merlin in the, in the movie, I'm like, I know him, you know, like I know him from, uh, from, from the the video game. He's so helpful and and nice. Um, uh, but yeah. Oh, that makes sense, um, actually. That you say that you do you remember him from Kingdom Hearts two or Kingdom Hearts in general? Um, yeah, because I feel like a lot of people would like, mm-hmm. you know, like we said, this is an old ass movie, so I feel like a lot of people probably would have known him from Kingdom Hearts. You know, like if you didn't watch that movie, like if you didn't grow up watching it, or you just they started watching it at some point before the games came out, then yeah, you probably would have just <laughs> seen him in the game first or anything else. Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. That you know. Doesn't seem as odd to me. Um, it is funny that it's called the Sword in the Stone. We don't even really see it. We see it in the prologue. We don't even really see it till like the last. I don't know, like like don't ten know, minutes like, of the movie, like something like that. Movie, yeah. Like, also, hats off to that that one knight that's like, give the boy a chance, let him pull it. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm like that guy is a bro. I would make that dude the first night at my round table. That guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, 
because the other the other dude and his uh and his guy are trying to like you know get the the sword yeah. right and it's okay pull the sword he's already go got it out okay like man fuck you all right he's like, like anybody can pull it out once it's been you know fucking shoved and, <laughs> and then he tries to yank it out and fucking no and oh, Sir Actors immediately punk. like, oh, forgive me the moment King Arthur pulls this fucking sword out. Like, come on, man, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> um, oh, to go back to the squirrel for a minute. The lady squirrel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I found that maybe I'm just looking at it deeper than what it is, but I was like, that's interesting that Arthur seems to always have issues with romance like with Guinevere and all that in some of the stories. And it's like, yeah, we have, we have issues with this squirrel that is totally in love with him. And then when he turns back into a squirrel, she's so sad. And she's crying. And she gets no resolution. She's just crying in the tree. I feel bad. All right. I feel really bad about that squirrel still. Uh, but yeah, I did. I yeah. did find that kind of like an interesting, like. Arthur and, and, and his issues with the love and romance uh, kind of come to in like a funny way in, in, in the movie. Obviously, they're not going to deal with any of the heavy, dark shit. That really is what the Arthurian legend kind of is. If you can can uh, if you ever read any of it or about any of it, a lot of it is weird and strange and uh, a lot of evil and darkness um, in there at times. Um, Uh, but yeah, um, there's kind of like some sing along songs in it, like with, with, with Merlin, but not, I don't feel like they're like long, like, um, which is fine no. with me. Cause I'm not it's a not big like fan of, ones. of, um, not a big fan of like sing alongs. Like it's not my, <laughs> I'm not that big musical guy <laughs> anyway. Like you watch this show long enough, you know, I don't do deal in like a lot of music stuff uh, uh really um but yeah there's like a few songs in it and they're fine um uh yeah i don't know what else to say on the sword and the stone guys uh check it out i guess if you've never seen it it's uh i actually have the book that the the um that the movie is based on by thy the the um the, yeah that i'm gonna i'm gonna read the once and future king um mm -hmm. and all that so dt do you have anything else to add on the, on the old sword and stone um no i mean it was like i said it was uh it was cool we watching an older uh like disney movie like this because I feel like a lot of the pre two thousand movies, like anything before two thousand, I haven't seen in like for fucking ever, unless it's like Mulan or Lion King or you know stuff like that, or right? like nineties stuff I'd seen more recently. But like, mm -hmm. and I, okay, so I guess anything before the nineties, like I don't, I don't remember as much, you know. Like I know I've seen a lot of that stuff as a kid, but I was so young that I probably. Like I, I might as well be watching the movie for the first time, like I did with this one, you know, because there was not a lot I remember. Um, and honestly, it makes me want to go, like, go back and rewatch a lot of the older catalog, you know, like. All right. If I look at the uh, a lot of the old Disney animated movies, like I'm looking right now because I was curious. Yeah, so uh, let, let's let's look at that. Let, let let's take a look at that because. There's a lot of stuff out there. So I have a lot of the very, here. very, the very, 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 very first one was Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and from 1937. Yeah. Then we got Pinocchio, 1940. Fantasia is one that I would, I actually would want to rewatch because I, I remember, I remember liking Fantasia. I have Fantasia on a videotape somewhere in this house. Don't ask me why, but I do. And then, hey man, like it's all good. Uh, Dumbo, Bambi, the Reluctant Dragon, which I don't even, I don't, I don't even know, know what I, that is. I don't, yeah, I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, uh, yeah, I have no idea what this is. 
Saludos amigos. I don't know what that is. Victory through air power, the three caballeros. A lot of this stuff I just this is like fucking World War II, like for you know, forties era stuff, so so dear to my heart, the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, Cinderella in nineteen fifty, Alice in Wonderland in fifty one. Yeah, that's a fifty one movie? Shit. Yeah. I, I would have figured that was like a sixties movie, but fifty one, huh? Damn. That's sooner than I thought. Peter Pan fifty three. Peter Pan's the only one I haven't seen in forever. Lady in the Tramp, Sleeping Beauty, Hundred and One Dalmatians, Sword in the Stone. I mean, we just that's the one that's that's the one we watched t- this time. Hey. All right. Mary Poppins in 64. That's a live action. Mary Poppins, y'all. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Jungle Book I, is, you know, love, love, love Jungle Book. Arist- the Aristocats, I probably have seen it, but again, who knows, dude? It's been too long. Robin Hood, it's, I don't I don't remember that one. Uh, Again, I, I must have seen it forever ago, but I, I don't. Rescuers, same shit. Pete's Dragon, yeah. Just Fox and the Hound. So the other one that I almost considered watching this time was the Black Cauldron. It was it was between the Black Cauldron and Sword in the Stone, right? Like I, I mm-hmm. was between one of those two, and ultimately we ended up just going with Sword in the Stone. But yeah, Black Cauldron maybe eventually we'll do another it, one on that one because it'll I, wind I, up on I, the I list because I've never seen it. I've never seen uh, Black Cauldron. Yeah, I I remember liking that one too, but it's again been so long since I've seen it, so. Eventually, keep an eye out. We'll do one on the Black Cauldron. The Great Mouse Detective, man. Brave the Little Toaster. I, the one I've probably seen the most, you've already gone past it, but you mentioned it, is The Fox and the Hound. Because I remember watching that one so much as a kid for some reason. Like, we had that on VHS, and I just remember watching it over and over and over again. Hmm. Yeah, just, again, so many of these, like, you know, Oliver and Company, Little Mermaid. I haven't seen the. I have a sister who used to love Little Mermaid, so I mean, she she had that on all the time. But like, yeah, a lot of that stuff. Rescuers Down Under. A lot of stuff I haven't seen. But then, but then, once we get to the nineties, once we get to the nineties, the stuff I have seen more recently, like Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Beauty Nightmare and the Christmas. Beast. The Lion King, Goofy movie, poke like all yeah, all the nineties stuff, Hercules, Mulan. Although that being said, there is one nineties movie that I have not seen in literal years, and that's Tarzan. I have not seen Tarzan in fucking forever, bro. <laughs> like no shit. I haven't seen Tarzan in fucking I was, since I was a, since I was a kid. I've probably. seen a lot of these in a long time, you know? Like I remember watching them as a kid, but not really. Like Mulan, like Mulan, I've watched more recently. Hercules, I've watched more recently. Uh, Bugs Life, I feel like I've watched bits and pieces of it more recently. The Toy Stories, I haven't seen in a hot minute either, but it has. I don't think it's been that long. Um, the Emperor's New Groove, I have, haven't seen that in a little bit, but it hasn't been like that long. Man, dinosaur! Remember the dinosaur movie from two thousand? Jeez. Yeah. So Atlantis, I rewatched very recently, like a year or two ago. Love that movie still. It holds up. I love Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Yeah. great movie. Oh, it's so good. Treasure Planet also holds up. I feel like we watched that one recently. Dealing with Stitch, I rewatched that one. Monsters Inc. Uh, anyway, so yeah, a lot of the a lot of the earlier stuff from like the before the 90s yeah is like stuff i haven't seen in so long yeah all Maja mentions oliver and company Pfft, i don't remember that i my, whenever I, if i ever watch that again it'll be for the first time because i don't remember shit about that movie same so yeah we'll keep an eye out because we might be rewatching some of these in, in the in the future um i might rewatch some of these just like all, like in my own time just to rewatch them because again it's been years but uh, yeah, and then maybe some of these might make the uh, might make the uh, the 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 eventual retro rewinds. Be looking forward to the animated versions of the live action versions of the original animations. It won't be long. Oh man, it'll, it'll come from full circle, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, 
you know, you joke about that, but some of these, like a lot of these are being remade in the live action, you know, like we've already gotten a, like a bunch of these. So eventually they will be, you know, but uh, yeah. Anyway, you know, keep an eye out for some of that stuff. We may be doing some of these in the future. I, I might watch some of these in my own time. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think that'll, that'll do it, huh? That's probably going to do it. Yeah. Um, let's just go ahead and do our shout outs. ZT. What do you got coming up this, this week, man? What's, what's on the docket? What's your, what are you going to be playing? You're up. Spider-Man. My more Marvel. Sorry. Marvel Spider-Man. Miles Morales is my next game coming up doing that tomorrow. Um, Wednesday, I'll be doing some Diablo four. And then Thursday, I'm going to be streaming the Annapurna Interactive Showcase. That is at noon Pacific. So stay tuned for that because I'll be checking that out. That's like the last big summer game showcase thing. So I will be streaming that again Thursday, 12 p.m. Pacific, Annapurna Interactive. And then, yeah, just Miles Morales. That's going to be the next game. I'm, I'm really, you know, looking forward to playing that and, and getting started on it. I've been waiting a long time to play it. So. Uh, that'll be the main thing. Uh, and then, like I said, keep an eye out for Diablo because I'll be having the drops and all that stuff. But yeah, other than that, that's what I got coming up. Uh, thank you guys for watching, for listening, for joining. Uh, I know it's a bit of a shorter episode, but I mean, we did say that up top. So uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you all. Follow me on all the things in the sidebar. And I will see you guys later. Bye bye, June. And hello, July, because we'll be seeing you guys in July next. Bye bye. Peace out, everyone. See you later. All right, guys, appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us for a couple hours as we go over the news and give our thoughts on some things. Appreciate and love everybody that's been here with us, even if it's just from, from like, recently or from uh, recent uh, th or from episode one when we had really crappy audio on my end and a really shitty uh, overlay that I made um, <laughs> from way back when we started to now. 165 episodes. Um, hi. I'm Josh902. Uh, I'm the, the, one of the hosts of this show and um, you're on my channel right now, hopefully, if you're watching live at uh, twitch.tv slash josh902. Um, coming up for me on stream, we're gonna hop back in the Final Fantasy 16 tomorrow, I hope. Um, uh, I, uh, appreciate all of you. Jess, I appreciate your hustle in the chat, but, uh, I don't, I don't need any graphics. Um, uh, I, I, um, uh, tomorrow Final Fantasy 16, uh, we'll continue here on the channel. Um, uh, and... And I want to do another dice stream because I do have some stuff to do. I'm also a dice maker, 902 Dice Creations. You can find me on Etsy and all that stuff. Um, but the last time I did a dice stream, it didn't end that well. So, um, uh, we'll see. Uh, I have I have I have dice to make. So, follow me on all the things. Go follow us on on YouTube. This podcast is available on MP3 on Spotify, all those places. It'll be up on DT's YouTube as well. Follow us on all the things. We'll see you next time. Hang around the community. Come join us. Come come chat with us. Come get to know us. Don't just try to sell your stuff in the chat like somebody just did. I consider that very rude. Um, I'd rather you come and get to know us first um, before you start trying to do that stuff. And we will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye and take it easy.